G'day Play Legends, welcome back to another vlog. We're gonna be talking about my Fujifilm night photography gear. It's probably one of the most questions I get asked. What Fujifilm gear I'm using, what lenses I recommend, the accessories, all that sort of stuff. And a lot has changed over this year for my camera bag specifically because a few lenses have been released. So I thought it's best to sit down and comprehensively go over everything that I use for night sky photography in different situations, from tripods to cameras, lenses and accessories, and the beautiful Star Tracker from Move, Shoot, Move. So we'll start off with a tripod. I use the AS80C range. It's carbon fiber, it's a lot heavier, a lot sturdy, because when we are doing night photography, we are obviously doing 20 second exposures over 12 or 15 images, sometimes doing panoramics or blending foregrounds and nighttime, so we can not allow that tripod to be moved even a winkling, especially in those Aussie winds, that is paramount for me. Then obviously it's just not for me doing night sky photography, it's also landscape photography. So that double panoramic head is absolute game changer for me. Shooting panoramics, whether it's a landscape or night sky photography, that is an absolute dream. It is a three section tripod. I generally only use it as a two section tripod. It's a lot heavier, it's a lot sturdier in the two section and it's a lot more durable. It can go out to the three section, but it is quite big. Uh, but the reason I do love that is because the last section of legs are still very, very thick, which is what we want for those long exposure photography. So I recommend the AS80 range for all photographers out there that do night sky photography, landscape photography it is the best bang for buck for my tripods if you ask me. Moving on to the cameras, I get asked all the time, why do you still use the X-T1 that got released in 2014? Why? Because it's absolutely incredible. That is why the 16 megapixel sensor is like nothing else. It is so bloody good. And the main thing is, it is ISO variable, meaning I can shoot at 100 ISO, go into Lightroom or post-production software and crank it all the way up and still get an ISO of 6,400 if I want to, which is fantastic for my upcoming trip, something like Iceland, where we have got um, light in the image that may be overexposed compared to the foreground, so I can underexpose it and really boost those shadows up and get that light back. So that's why I love using the X-T1 and obviously the 16 megapixel ratio, so light to megapixel ratio is perfect for the noise reduction in the X-T1. The backup camera I use is the X-T3, obviously my main photography camera, I absolutely adore the X-T3. And if I do want to sort of look at selling an image, I'll either shoot a panoramic with the X-T1 or just go out and shoot with the X-T3. I still think the noise for an APS-C camera is passable. If you're going to warn me in the comments below saying, oh, Fujifilm shooting night sky photography, yeah, so be it. Look how small my gear is compared to your massive Nikon or uh, Canon gear. So I absolutely love the Fujifilm and obviously it's my travel, landscape and night photography gear. So it does an absolute dream job for me. Starting with lenses, I'm going to go in chronological order of what I recommend and what I use. And obviously I'll explain to you as I go along. For me, the Viltrox 13mm 1.4 is the best lens on the market today for night sky photography. The reason I say that is a little bit biased. Yes, it's extremely good for night sky photography, but I'm in love with the focal range, that 20 to 20 and a half millimeters, and also it covers a huge hole in my landscape photography gear. I can now bring that one lens as my wide angle photography and night sky photography. That is why I so highly recommend it, and it can triple up as a vlog setup also with that autofocus. For me, for landscape photography, night photography is absolutely bloody gorgeous. And I really, really recommend that lens if you are serious in the Fujifilm ecosystem in landscape, outdoor and night sky photography. Would it be my first go-to recommendation if you're a beginner night sky photographer? No, I'll get onto that in just a second. The 16mm 1.4 is my second lens. The reason behind that also is it's the dual purpose once again, and you'll hear that a lot over all my gear reviews or whatever it may be. It has to have a dual purpose setup. This is my main low light video lens. I love the 16mm, that 24mm equivalent, tells a huge story of the surrounding area that you're in. Yes, it isn't the best at night sky photography, and yes, it is quite expensive. But as I said, the purpose that it gets for me and the work that I've done with this lens is paramount and I wouldn't change it for anything. Probably saying that, I would look into the 23mm 1.4 just because 16mm and 13mm are quite close in the focal range, but it's hard because this is a video series lens for me and a secondary night sky photography lens, but I would love that 23mm to get that sort of compression uh, in the video and photography for night sky. 
the Samyang 12mm f2. This is my first ever night sky photography lens. I am using the manual focus series. For me, the image quality in the autofocus and manual focus is exactly the same, and the manual focus is a lot cheaper. The reason I'm not using this as my go-to lens for night sky photography anymore is because of that manual focus. As I said, I want a dual purpose set up for landscape and night sky photography. This was a little bit hard and a little bit annoying when doing focus stacking or shooting um, sort of those real high contrast scenes. The Filtrox definitely, definitely is a huge step above in the contrast for those sort of front on light scenes for the sunrise or sunset images. But this is my go-to recommendation if you just want a lens for probably second hand for night sky photography for the Fujifilm or Sony or whatever ecosystem you're using. This for me is the best bang for buck out there. The last lens is the Mica 10 millimeter F2. Now I've just done a review about this lens. I don't want to speak too much about it because I haven't extensively reviewed it, especially on those deep, dark sky nights. I haven't tested it out comparing to these lenses, which we will do on this channel at some point. But unfortunately, that was probably my last night sky photography shoot for this year uh, because I am heading off to Iceland, uh, Dolomites and Slovenia. And unfortunately, the Milky Way is starting to go away. So we have to wait for next year to fully test this lens out. There was a little bit of an issue for it, but make sure to head up here and watch that. Moving on to the video and safety equipment. I have a head torch that is rechargeable. I have the Nightcore SC10 video light that I use for sort of those minimalist travel series that I do. Then if I'm going out, I use the Neue LED 176 LED series, and that is very, very good. It uses the NP Sony batteries. This lasts me such a long time. It casts amazing light when videoing, and if I want to light up a foreground scene, it's absolutely beautiful, and they are so inexpensive, about 50 Australian dollars off Amazon. So that is why I really recommend this. And obviously the Nightcore SC10 doubles up as a travel light in the back of camper vans, when you're traveling, when you're walking. Um, setting up your gear, whatever it may be. It casts a really good light on low settings that lasts 100 bloody hours. I love traveling with rechargeable gear because obviously I travel a lot in the camper van. It makes my life so much easier. Moving on to the Move Shoot Move Star Tracker, also rechargeable once again. I love this because it is so small and so versatile. It's something, granted, I should use a lot more, and since I've moved back to Australia, have used less and less. But the Move Shoot Move is absolutely fantastic. I also have the Z and V bracket from Move Shoot Move, designed by Alan Wallace. It's absolutely incredible what they do. It saves you so much movement, space, weight, everything in your sort of travel setup for that. You don't have to worry about bringing big old ball heads, and then I just use another ball head. It's the KB36 series, my smallest ball head that I travel with uh, as another ball head, because obviously you need two ball heads to set this one up and start star tracking, and it does an absolutely wonderful, wonderful job. It all packs away into a very small unit. It's very lightweight. I don't like to travel and hike around with it because it is still quite heavy, but I do put it in the back of the cam fan and leave it there and travel around with it. And once again, it is something I should use more and more because once you start using it, it does become a lot easier and you get a lot more comfortable with it. But as I said, the gear is just so, becoming so good these days and it's so practical and so easy just to get an image within sort of half an hour to 45 minutes, which I absolutely adore. But guys, let me know in the comments below if you're a Fujifilm user or another APS-C user, if there's any other lenses that I've missed out there that you highly recommend. Obviously, I use the 16 to 55. I just tested out the Tamron 17 to 70 mil last night. I was very impressed with that. But these aren't dedicated night sky photography lenses. They do a good job if you are beginning in night sky photography and not really that interested in it, I would recommend using them, but the Samyang is my go-to recommendation, but if you use landscape and night sky photography quite heavily, invest in the Viltrox and you will not be disappointed. But I want to hear from you guys down below in the comments, what do you think about this very minimalist setup for night sky photography? This will be even condensed even more, hopefully in the future with two lenses probably going and maybe just traveling with one single light. We'll see how that goes. I'm trying that out in Iceland and we'll see how it goes that that is a very minimalist, very practical setup to get images that I'm happy to sell to the South Australian Tourism Board. So anyone out there that says this Fujifilm gear isn't good enough, I've made quite a bit of money with this selling night sky photography panoramics and just single exposures for this camera. So that is just how it is. You're better off getting out there, understanding your gear and using it. But I'd love to hear your comments down below. But guys, make sure to get out there, keep creating, keep inspiring other people. Drop below and subscribe because I'll see you on the next one. Ciao. Thank you.